Now we've talked about hypertension and you know that it means that you have high blood pressure. So the next logical thing to think about is why is that bad? Why is it a problem to have high blood pressure? And I like to think about uh, high blood pressure from kind of two different perspectives. One would be the perspective of the heart and the other is the perspective of the blood vessels. And so here you can almost divide it up as the, the thing that's making the pressure and or generating the pressure, which is the heart, and the thing that's receiving the pressure. So generating versus receiving pressure. And each of these two areas has some serious consequences for the body. So let's, let's divide it up here. Let's just draw kind of a dashed line to divide up our screen. And we'll talk about both areas. So let's start with the receiving pressure side. So we have uh, the large and middle sized arteries. And specifically, I mean arteries that are between, let's say, 25 millimeters in diameter all the way down to about one millimeter in diameter. So these are primarily, these are the vessels that are going to get blood from the heart to the different organs that it needs to get to. And then you, of course, have the small arteries, the small arteries and the arterioles. And these are going to be at the, at the high end. They're going to be one millimeter, but they're going to go all the way down, get smaller and smaller to about 0 0.01 millimeters, so about a hundredth of the size. They're very tiny. And these are receiving pressure. Both of them are receiving pressure. These uh, I'll draw as I'll leave the drawing up above, and these are kind of very, very narrow ones, right? So both of them are uh, receiving the pressure, and they're going to have problems. So for example, if you have, let's say, a large or middle artery that is, um, let me draw in a different color. Let's say, you know, it's here. It's very uh, elastic. All right, elastic. Over time, if you keep exposing this elastic uh, vessel or tube to high pressures, over time what will happen is this becomes very firm, very firm, like a, like a pipe. So that's one change. And in fact, that, that change from being elastic to firm, we call that arteriosclerosis. I'll write that in white. Arteriosclerosis. And in fact, a very similar thing happens on the uh, other side with the small arteries and arterioles. They also can have very similar kind of change, and they can go from being very elastic. I'm trying to draw it so it's got some springiness. So that's obviously uh, kind of tricky to draw. But it becomes very firm. These become very firm as well over time. And they lose that uh, elasticity. And when it happens in the small arteries or arterioles, we call that arteriolo, a very similar word, but it's slightly different. Arteriolo, an extra L and an O, sclerosis. So this is the difference, right? They're very similar things, kind of similar processes, but one is in the smaller arteries, one is in the, the larger middle-sized arteries. So this is uh, one of the things that can happen when you have lots of high blood pressure constantly exposed to these vessels. They can become firm. Okay, going back to the large and middle arteries, you also can have a, a situation, I'll draw it here, where you have an artery, let's say, actually let me write what it is first, uh, you can have an aneurysm. And an aneurysm is where you have a vessel, let's say this is my vessel, and it's, uh, it's taking blood through it, the blood is going through it. And because of the uh, constant blood pressure that's going through this vessel, uh, the wall starts to get weak. So at one spot, it starts to get weak. Let's say right here, instead of being like that, it starts to look like this. And you get this like little area of weakness. I'll try to draw like that. And because it's weak, the blood will start going and hitting and bouncing off the walls and making it a little bit bigger. So it looks like that, and over time it might do this. It might become like a big sack, and that's an aneurysm. And actually that aneurysm, if it's a sack of blood, can actually burst and break. 
and that blood can spill out, and we call that a hemorrhage. So you can actually have an aneurysm because of a weak vessel wall. And now, uh, looking at the small arteries or arterioles, you can also have uh, not necessarily aneurysms, aneurysms in the same way, but you can have uh, breaking or hemorrhage. And, and here I want to show you or remind you that these vessels, these tiny ones anyway, they're usually not sitting out there on their own. They're usually within an organ. So this tiny vessel, remember, it's one millimeter to a hundredth of a millimeter. So it's actually sitting inside of a kidney or sitting inside of an eye. And so these organs have inside of them these arterioles and small arteries. And so when they're in that situation, if you have a break, let's say, uh, actually, let me, let me write this slightly differently. If you have a break in the vessel, you actually get organ damage. So this could be because the, the vessel literally breaks right here and blood spills out. And it could also be because uh, these tiny vessels are necessary to make the organ work. For example, the kidneys require that these small arteries and arterioles are working properly. And if they're not, you start getting some problems with uh, being able to, to do the job of the kidney. And so you can get kidney damage. Or if it's in your eye, you can get what we call retinopathy. Retinopathy. Basically meaning that the retina is not working properly. Retinopathy. So you can have kidney damage or retinopathy. You can have aneurysms, arteriosclerosis or arteriolosclerosis. And these are all related to the fact that the blood vessels are breaking or they're becoming more firm. And this is all on the side of receiving pressure.